In this lecture, we're going to cover data analysis. If you think about the HR Analytics Project lifecycle, data analysis is an important phase as part of this lifecycle. So after we've formulated our question, we've acquired our data, we've managed our data, now we're ready to analyze the data. So in terms of data analysis, what does that actually mean? Well, it's a really, really broad phase, and it's really described most broadly as a process of applying mathematics or statistical techniques to data to identify associations, differences, changes, or even classes and categories, as well as we use data analysis to predict the likelihood of future events, values, or changes that might occur. And that's really getting into those ideas of predictive and prescriptive analytics. Now, there's different types of tools and approaches we can use in data analysis, and these can include mathematical approaches, statistical approaches, machine learning approaches, and, and computational modeling and simulations. So let's dive into each of these in a little bit more detail. We're talking about mathematics in the context of data um, analysis within, more broadly, the context of HR analytics. We generally are talking about three different areas of mathematics. Arithmetic, so your basic subtractions and additions and so forth, are really foundational. In fact, there is someone I know that's a, a very well-known person in the field of HR analytics who suggested that if we could get managers who are using our information system platforms or using any type of data they have access to just use fifth grade math, so counting things, addition, subtraction, fractions, and so forth, this could be really, really valuable in helping their day-to-day -day operational decision making. But beyond arithmetic, we can also focus on algebra, whether that's linear algebra or something else, as well as calculus in some cases, especially if you start getting into approaches like differential equation modeling and things like that. But by and large, in HR analytics, we're pretty comfortable in the arithmetic area as well as in the linear algebra area. But more and more, you're seeing people move into also calculus-based approaches as well. Most commonly, perhaps, though, we're using statistics. And statistics can be really divided into two different buckets, descriptive and inferential statistics. So let's start with descriptive statistics. So when we're talking about descriptive statistics, as the name implies, we're talking about describing characteristics of a sample. So descriptive, describe. And so these can include indicators of central tendency, like your mean, your median, or your mode to help understand a distribution of scores, assuming that they're relatively normal in distribution, that the mean, median, and mode should be about the center point of that distribution. In addition, we can talk about the dispersion to of those scores. So we can talk about the variance, and if we take the square root of the variance, we get our standard deviation. And we can also talk about our range and our quartile range and so forth, which can be useful for a number of different reasons. Now, in addition, descriptive statistics can include things like simply counting something in our sample, like frequencies or counts. So how many people work at this facility versus that facility if we're talking about some headcount data? Now, moving on to inferential statistics, as the name implies, inferential statistics implies we're inferring something. And specifically, we're making inferences about a population based on the sample from which we've gathered data or acquired data. And so in general, we can distinguish between two different types of inferential statistics, parametric and non-parametric statistics. Parametric implies assumptions of normality and that there is some kind of distributional assumption here. And these common tests include t-tests, analysis of variance, Pearson product moment correlation, and linear regression, just to name a few. Now, when we move to non-parametric, we're not necessarily, we don't have those same assumptions about normality and the type of, dis, and in terms of the distribution. And so examples of this include the Man whitney u test, Kruskal-Wallis one-way analysis of variance test, and McNamara's test as well. Now, there's many others we can mention there. And as you notice, there's an old joke too here that if you want to have something named after you as a statistician, develop a non-parametric test as here you can see that um, at least the ones I've named here, have one or more person's names attached to them who developed these approaches or pioneered them. So again, within inferential statistics, we can focus on parametric and non-parametric approaches. Uh, parametric approaches tend to be the more standard approaches that you would learn in a statistics class first. And non-parametric tend to be the ones that you learn about when your data don't meet those assumptions of normality, for example. Related to the idea of statistics is this concept of machine learning. And the reason is, is that machine learning is a form of artificial intelligence in which typically statistical analysis is applied to the data in a manner that allows the quote machine to quote learn and act without being explicitly programmed to do so. And so this is often based on some type of pattern recognition that's taken place. 
And so there's actually a lot of different types of approaches and algorithms and types of models that fit under the umbrella of machine learning. And so these can be based on different types of statistical analyses too, whether that's simply linear regression or Bayesian analysis or neural networks or something else. And within machine learning, we can also distinguish between what's called supervised and unsupervised learning. So starting with supervised learning, these are really when we have algorithms in which the machine is trained on data with a specified outcome and predictor variable in mind, or multiple outcomes and multiple predictor variables in mind. So an example of this would be some regression-based approach that we might use for supervised learning, like lasso regression or something like that, or if we use decision tree or random forest. Now, moving on to unsupervised learning, these tend to be more exploratory in nature in that an outcome variable is not necessary, is not specified. And really what we're looking is to find things inductively here. So what are the structures and patterns and clusters that might be inferred from the data? So k-means is an example of a type of unsupervised machine learning analysis we might engage in, um, as well as some types of principal components analysis and so forth. So again, we can distinguish between supervised and unsupervised learning within the bucket or within the broader uh, topic of machine learning. So moving on finally to this idea of computational modeling and simulations, this is really just when we're talking about using computational models to simulate the behavior of often complex systems. So maybe if we're talking about simulation, we're doing something like a Monte Carlo analysis where we can iterate a number of different times all these different kind of hypotheticals or, or different samples or things like that in order to better understand the data or understand some what-if scenarios, for example. We can also use approaches like agent-based modeling too, or sometimes it's called agent-based simulation. And the idea behind agent-based modeling is we can look at actor-to-actor, agent-to-agent relationships as opposed to just looking at variable-to-variable -variable relationships. So that's one of the strengths of agent-based modeling. Also, we can set these models up to also look at hypotheticals. So if we understand how the behavior of a system currently works based on certain data, we can set up an agent-based model to say, well, what if there's a shock to this system? Or maybe layoffs, for example. Or what if the types of employees working and um, our employee change? Or just what happens if we see all these agents or employees interacting with each other in the simulation and we let that play out over 10 or 20 years? what maybe emerges from that that we wouldn't necessarily anticipate or expect. Now, another type, it would be um, dynamical systems modeling, differential equation modeling, and so forth. There's many other types of computational modeling and simulations we could apply. Essentially, you can apply different mathematics and statistics within these approaches or in conjunction with these approaches as well. And so these can be really powerful for trying to anticipate or plan for things that might happen. So to sum up, we focused on the data analysis phase here of the HR Analytics Project lifecycle. And so data analysis comes after we've carefully formulated our question, we've acquired the data, we've managed our data, and now we're ready to actually analyze the data using different types of approach, whether that's using mathematics, statistics, computational modeling and simulation, or even the artificial intelligence approach of machine learning. Now, the next phase after this, after data analysis, is then we're ready to actually interpret our data and tell a story with the data to ultimately deploy and implement it. So this wraps up the lecture on data analysis.